Denny Hamlin could be without FedEx in 2025. Was Martin Truex Jr.'s team hiding something Saturday night in Bristol? Plus, Alexander Rossi has a new home in IndyCar for 2025. <laughs> Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. After Martin Truex Jr.'s eighth finish of 20th or worse Saturday night, the NBC cameras during the post-race show caught something that was odd to a lot of fans. So as the camera cuts from Denny Hamlin walking down pit road, it goes to the number 19 hauler of Martin Truex Jr. And this is where fans got distracted with something that wasn't actually happening. As the camera cuts, a crew member stands up and kind of gets in front of the camera. Obviously, he's doing this intentionally. He's trying to make sure that you can't look and see what's going on in that 19 hauler. I like how the Ferrari mechanics stand out in front of the garage anytime they work on the car, except nobody really cares because, well, they're not worried about that. They're more interested in what Red Bull and McLaren are doing at this point. So this guy is putting his face everywhere, the NASCAR version of Jersey Jerry, and trying to make sure that the camera can't see. And immediately fans think that he's been caught red-handed. Oh, this guy looks guilty. They took to the internet talking about what is the 19 team doing? Are they cheating this time? Remember what they did at Watkins Glen when the in-car camera caught them? What are they doing? What are they possibly hiding? Here's the thing. They weren't doing anything wrong. The man was just literally holding a dolly, bent down, working on that dolly. And what was on the dolly? It was the fuel can cart. So nothing illegal happening there. They're not spiking their fuel. And they're not putting jet fuel on it like they're Michael Waltrip racing. Nothing illegal was happening there. What he was doing was being a good soldier. He was standing in front of the camera to make sure that they couldn't pick up on the argument that was happening between crew chief James Small and one of the Joe Gibbs racing executives. That's who's standing behind there. And that's when the camera cuts to them. You see the two of them having an animated conversation. That's what he was trying to make sure did not make it to the TV. Unfortunately, it did. Kevin Harvick mentioned it on his podcast. The internet found it. Now it's on here as well. So yeah, he was trying to do his best, get in the way, point up at Colossus, the, the TV screen, uh, you know, point out that there's a really clear night. You can see the moon, everything that was making sure to maybe not look at what was happening behind him, which was just an animated conversation, right? I mean, emotions run high. They just got eliminated from the playoffs. They are on an abysmal streak. Like I said, eight races of a 20th place finish or worse happening. And for Martin, it's his retirement season. James Small wants to get him back to victory lane. They had a good shot of having a top five finish and probably advancing on on Saturday night if they didn't get a speeding penalty, 0 0.09 mile an hour. Just an absolutely brutal hit for Martin Truex Jr. But this isn't anything out of the ordinary. We have people, uh, you know, team members, executives having heated conversations. Sometimes they do it behind closed doors. Sometimes it happens on the lift gate of the hauler and for everybody to see. Things happen. Adults have conversations. Sometimes people get heated. It always seems to go on. I mean, at Kentucky one year, I saw William Byron's dad and his driver coach, Max Pappas, have an all-out yelling match behind one of the haulers uh, post-race. Things happen. Like I said, everybody's human here. Sometimes emotions just get the better of you and it's nothing out of the ordinary. No, they were not cheating. No, they weren't trying to do anything with the car, with any of their equipment, with the fuel, the tires, whatever people come up and have a crazy conspiracy idea for. It's just a guy that was trying to get in front of the camera there to make sure that, you know, the camera didn't pick up on his crew chief and one of his executives having a heated conversation. So it becomes a talking point. Unfortunately, it did become a talking point for them, but nothing illegal was happening. Staying on the topic of Joe Gibbs racing, FedEx could possibly exit the sport at the end of the 2024 season where they've been with Joe Gibbs racing since 2005. That's before Connor Zilich was born. Jesus Christ. If you really want to feel old about it, FedEx uh, up until 2021 was essentially the full season sponsor for Denny Hamlin. Every now and then you might get a sports clips uh, paint scheme mixed in there. But for the most part, they were covering 35 of the 38 races a year, 36, 37, sometimes 38 races. They were a big time sponsor at their peak, spending $25 million annually on that sponsorship. In 2021, they started to reduce the number of primary sponsorships that they had. They're all the way down to, I believe, 11 or 12 this season in 2024. Uh, so they continually look at cutting costs. And according to Adam Stern at the Sports Business Journal, they're once again looking at reducing their number of primaries next year or possibly just exiting the sport altogether. Reducing the number of primaries next year could be all the way down to 10 or maybe even single digits, uh, which is certainly a drop down in the presence that we've seen from FedEx. Now, FedEx did get a new CEO, Raj Subramaniam, uh, in 2022, replacing Fred Smith, not the one that writes for uh, Road and Track, but rather the one that is now the CEO of FedEx. And he... Maybe he's not a race car guy, right? And maybe marketing budgets have to shift around. FedEx did, of course, uh, tell their shareholders that they would be cutting $4.5 billion in cost by 2025. 
billion. That's with a B in cost, which is insane that they're like, oh yeah, we think we can save four and a half billion dollars. What what are we spending money on? One and a half billion dollars of that budget will come out of the general and administrative area, which is doesn't doesn't sound great for the uh, NASCAR sponsorship. Now, before everybody panics, before all the fans freak out, NASCAR's dying, sponsors are leaving, this and that. FedEx also did um, in their sponsorship of the Washington Commander Stadium uh, early as well. They ended that contract early because they wanted to get out of that deal. So it's not that they're leaving NASCAR altogether. It's just that they're really cutting back on the amount of marketing and sponsorship dollars that they're putting out there. Listen, here's the thing I just don't think people fully understand about marketing. As a guy that works in marketing, fatigue is very real. You're constantly in the search for your next great performing creative. And then you know eventually that's going to start to fatigue out. So then you're starting to work on what the next option is. And for a guy that continually buys placements in various different areas, I know that that eventually will fatigue out as well. For a sponsor to have been in the sport for nearly 20 years at this point, eventually sponsorship is going to fatigue out. Uh, it's just going to get tired. You can only market to the same group of people for so long before the ROI just doesn't seem to make sense anymore. And that's a situation like what we're seeing here and with Lowe's and Home Depot and all these other different brands that have left the sport uh, you know, over the last decade. You can only, Mars is a perfect example. You can only tell people about how great M&Ms are for so long before people are like, we know M&Ms are great. We are aware of this. We buy M&Ms. It's just not, you know, it's not hitting the same way that it used to. And same with FedEx right here. We know FedEx is generally going to get your package here a day later than that says that it's going to uh, when you track it. I'm aware of that at this point. I don't need you guys to continually tell me about how great FedEx is. General consensus here is eventually, you know, marketing fatigues. Geico uh, not coming back as one of the premier sponsors for the Cup Series. That is a cost-cutting measure of their own. But again, we know all about Geico. I, at some point, the, the advertisement for Geico fatigues out. You just become blasé to it at this point. So for... Denny Hamlin and for FedEx, according to Adam Stern, Sports Business Journal, Jogas Racing has started to look for uh, potential replacements for Denny Hamlin, for FedEx on Denny Hamlin's car, rather. Um, obviously, he's had Mavis tire on that car a lot this year, as well as other different various brands. At times, Yahoo uh, is another one, Air State Battery, uh, as well as uh, Sport Clips. So, yeah, it would be a bummer to see FedEx leave, but it's things that we're going to see happen. And then we'll see sponsors come back into the sport at times as well. It's just eventually those sponsorship dollars, the sponsorship fatigues out and they need to go somewhere else and try something different. Today's video is sponsored by Lockdown Brand. Head over to LockdownBrand.com today for your motorsports inspired apparel. Their shirts are absolutely phenomenal. Their hats equally as great. Use code BREAKHARD10 at checkout to save 10%. Also, do not forget that there is now a Break Hard blog as well. I'm posting about two to three times a week. I will have my Monday morning cool down lap out on Monday morning. So go ahead and sign up. You have it delivered to your inbox by clicking the link that is down in the description below. Moving over to IndyCar real quick, Alexander Rossi has a new home for the 2025 season. The 2016 Indianapolis 500 winner who will be leaving Aero McLaren, well, at the end of this year, their season's already over, obviously, will join Ed Carpenter Racing in 2025 on a multi-year deal to drive that number 20 car. And for Carpenter, they just got a massive talent. Eight-time race winner and Alexander Rossi hasn't won since 2022, uh, which is unfortunate because he and that McLaren team never just really seemed to gel together. Meanwhile, Pato went out there and won uh, a few races. So Rossi Rossi now moves over to Carpenter, who hasn't won a race since 2021 when Rena's VK kind of surprised everybody and broke out at the Indianapolis road course for his first ever and lone victory at this point. Rossi will be joined by uh, Christian Rasmussen, who will be going full time in 2025 in the number 21 car. Ed Carpenter will drive the team's third car at the Indianapolis 500. But for Carpenter, they just landed a massive talent, a guy that can absolutely help them right the ship, a guy that they can build around and can take a lot of feedback from. I mean, Rossi's been at Andretti Autosport. He's been at Aero McLaren. He's a guy who knows what needs to be done to make your cars competitive and potentially win races. Now, Carpenter did just announce a new partnership with Ted Glove of Heartland Food Products uh, to be a new co-owner in the team. That is an injection of cash that that team desperately needed and probably why they ended up being able to sign Alexander uh, Rossi. So that is a Chevy team. They are always quick at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They should be quick again next year at the 500. The biggest struggle for them is once again going to be on road and street courses, and hopefully Rossi can help elevate their game there. But expect these cars 
cars to be competitive on ovals and uh, you know maybe not in 2025 but in 2026 hopefully we see a program turnaround uh, from that Ed Carpenter racing team so let me know in the comments what you think about Martin Truex Jr. and that situation that was going on there post-race FedEx possibly leaving Denny Hamlin at the end of the season plus Alexander Rossi signing with Ed Carpenter Racing like and subscribe to the channel follow me on TikTok at Break Hard Instagram Twitter and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.